love. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, I'm Jessica Alexandria, the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary and the Sacred Circle Tarot School. Today we're going to be talking about the lunar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Capricorn. And this is legit one of those moments in history, your history and global history, that I can see will be a bit of a game changer. The thing is with eclipses, especially lunar eclipses, sometimes in the moment we can feel something occurring we can feel something brewing we can feel energy building and whatever happens around two to three days before or after the eclipse has a tendency to just shift everything like let's say if you're walking down a path and you have a destination that you want to go to this is when something whatever step you take it somehow makes a like takes you completely off path or on path miles different than the original path that you were on if that makes any sense that's what i'm seeing for this eclipse which is going to be happening july 4th july 5th depending on your time zone now for me personally i'm in eastern standard time zone and this eclipse i have the chart pulled up for 12 22 12 25 a.m eastern standard time on july 5th but if you you want to kind of like plug in your time zone in order to see the exact time and specifics however you don't need to see the exact times you just need to know the energy of what it is that you're working with because you will see this that being said the next thing that i have to say is that i've been seeing a lot of comments lately on my instagram on twitter on youtube saying jess i don't have capricorn in my chart this doesn't impact me First of all, every single one of us has Capricorn ruling some energy or area of our lives. Your sun sign may not be Capricorn. You might be a Gemini or a Virgo or a Sagittarius or whatever. Your rising sign may not be Capricorn, but Capricorn does rule an aspect of and a, a chunk of your life. Not only that, but just because you don't have Capricorn ruling something very specific in, in your life doesn't mean that you are not engaging or interacting with people who have it you know, personal planets that are really getting triggered and you crossing paths with them or you having relations with them in some way, shape or form impacts you in some way. So it will inevitably bleed into your life or impact your life. The more closer you are to a personal planet, you know, or uh, uh, energy uh, with Capricorn that is like highlighted in your chart, the more strength you'll you'll feel it. But for the most part, we're all, you know, it will impact some energy and area of your life. The other thing is that this energy as above, so below. So what's going on in the planets is occurring here on Earth. So not only will this, could this impact you in your personal life and the, the chances of it impacting you in your personal life are pretty high, but you're definitely going to see this in the world. You're definitely going to see this in the news, especially this eclipse right here this is like i said is one of those game changing eclipses it's one of those things that i it's not that we we as astrologers or that i as an astrologer didn't see it coming we did see it coming this is energy that's been building up for a long time why is that because capricorn cap the the planets the major planets jupiter pluto saturn have been concentrating their energy in the realms of Capricorn, in the um, in the sign of Capricorn, and what happens because these planets are so slow moving is that there this um, pressure, this adjustment that is happening that is needed has been like the foundation of the world as we know it or our world. You know what I mean? So not only is it in our government, our politics, and business, big business, and our leaders. Um, and the rules and the structure of how we know things to be and how we know things to be run, but it's also going to impact us in the area of our life that I guarantee you, you probably experienced the most frustration in for the last two to three years. That's how serious this is. Now I'm gonna talk to you next about why um, this energy during the eclipse is gonna get triggered and how that will impact you. But the thing is with Capricorn is that it's very, it's not a very short-lived, type of energy it's not temporary it's the bones the literally capricorn rules the bones and teeth so it's the the bones of what it is that we were born into our experience and we have to kind of you know grow with it evolve with it and the growing pains that come with that 
Capricorn energy is ruled by Saturn. Saturn says, listen, we want you to mature. We want you to grow up. We want you to be wise as much as possible. We want your your foundation and the rules that is that you're following they have to make sense if they don't make sense why are they cemented in place and when saturn moving through capricorn starts to highlight and concentrate all of its attention and the energy of capricorn and the energy in the area of our life that this is ruling then that's when we start to see this breakdown there's this common denominator of people saying the same thing which is this isn't fair i didn't ask for this i don't deserve this or there's certain people who have benefited from the fact that certain things are unfair, that certain things are, you know, these rules have worked to protect a small population of people, but victimizing or making other people vulnerable. And that's something that it's not only, not only do we see this in our news, and we're not going to, this is, you guys hear me say this all the time, that astrology is not an opinion. This is not us talking about our opinions, it's talking about the energy and how that energy manifests. So... If you're getting triggered by what it is that I'm saying, just go ahead and throw that out as best as you can. But because this is the, the astrology chart, this is the timing, the divine timing that we're in right now. Now, how this impacts you in your personal life is the very opposite of Capricorn is Cancer. And Cancer energy needs to be nurtured. It needs to have a space that it belongs. It needs to feel safe. Capricorn creates the walls. Capricorn is opposite Cancer. Capricorn creates the walls that protect and the boundaries that protect the softness and the vulnerabilities of, of cancer, that way cancer can be a leader, that way cancer can create change based, based upon, you know, coming from its emotions, because cancer is considered a cardinal sign. It's a, a sign that wants to initiate change and it, it pulls its power from its emotions, from its softness, from its heart, from its feelings. So if we don't have those things in place and if you don't have those things in place and in this area of your life that you're experiencing the most frustration with the most um you know feelings of you know am i of course my camera crashes right after <laughs> i made that point but maybe that's because that's a message for someone someone needed to receive that someone needed to hear that period but moving forward this wisdom like i was saying this wisdom is not confined or contained to an age group or a generation because that's the thing about Saturn is like, yeah, you know, you can get wiser through your experiences as you get older, but there's different types of wisdoms. There's different types, levels of intelligence, intelligences that exist. And the younger people can come through with some really strong epiphanies. The younger people are leading the re revelation right now. They're the ones who are breaking up change. They're the ones that are saying, we do not value this anymore. This should not be valued. Let's, as this thing is breaking apart, we're going to show and enforce and demand radical change. So that's something to take away from this as well. Back to the lunar eclipse though. The lunar eclipse, like I was saying, it's really triggering full moons in general. So lunar eclipse is the, the full, full moon to infinity and beyond. Like it's intensified. Lunar eclipses and full moons have a way of really tapping into a welling of emotion, a welling of feelings, a welling of intuition. Feel like feelings that you thought or vibes that you were missing, all of a sudden they become so obvious. They stand out, they are unavoidable. If you continue to kind of blind yourself to it or continue on a path that the universe does not see matches your highest vibration or this highest vision that we're all going towards, it will dismantle it, dismantle it, it will destroy it, it will pick you up and put you down in the place that you do belong in order to make sure that you are safe, that you have structure, that the rules that you're following make sense, that they apply to everyone, and that they serve a greater purpose, a higher purpose. Why? Because the universe is arranged to create equality. It's arranged to create harmony and balance. If something is off, if something is amiss, it will pick up on it because the universe goes with energy, not how things see, not the ego, it goes with energy. It will pick up on it, it will narrow in on it, and then it will work to fix it, especially these planets right now in Capricorn energy. So what you can do and what I'm seeing for you guys is um, this desire, this need, and I talked about this in the Astro Chat Live. I go live, for those of you guys that don't know, I go live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 
at Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel and I talk about the week ahead. Well, this week when I was trying to talk about the astrology planets, I got this major download. So I want you guys to kind of revisit that if you need to or listen to it for the first time if you haven't. But there's this need to be humbled. That was one of the major um, messages that came through. Um, but it was pretty much this this um, cosmic slap in the face, honestly, for all of us to step out and away from our egos and basically what our ego is, is our identity. How we know ourselves to be, how we know someone else to be, and how we know things to be. Step away from that and open up to being, to downloading these revelations and these truths that spirit, the divine, God, the universe, whoever you want to call it, is giving to us now. At the time of the eclipse, which again is July 4th, July 5th, depending on your time, each and every single one of us, we have to open ourselves up in a sacred space, in a safe space, and revisit these this area that we're in right now, our relationship, our life, our health. We have to pay attention to detail. Why? Because the part of fortune and the vertex point, the vertex point is the, the point of fated encounters, fated situations, fated things that we need to experience that can change the, the, the trajectory of our life, the direction of our life. And the part of fortune is the space within the um, astrology chart that shows where we get our greatest luck from and what we can use in order to really tap into that space of great luck. It falls in the sign of Virgo. Virgo is about information. It's about digesting that information. It's about understanding that information and putting it exactly where it is that it belongs. You have to really ask yourself and question especially Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Cancer. The sun is falling in the sign of Cancer. Cancer wants you to be nurtured. Cancer wants you to find the space that you belong. You have to question yourself and ask yourself, where is it that I am right now? Do I belong here? Is this safe for me to stay here? It's not about being comfortable. It's not about um, what it is that you're normal, what your normal is, or what it is that you've accustomed, what you're accustomed to. It's about making sure that you are not in a space that you're comfortable in, but it threatens everything for you. It threatens your future. The universe simply will not allow it. It's a conversation that you have to open yourself up to receive. You have to do it. I'm seeing this action. Not only is Chiron in Aries, not only is Mars in Aries. Aries is the sign that says, I am. It focuses all the energy on itself. Some, sometimes there's some people in your life that will say that you're being selfish, but it's not selfish for you to question your normal, question what you want for yourself, question if this is healthy. Virgo is, Virgo energy in this, for those of you guys who are like, why are we moving all over the chart? Jess, why, why are you going all over this Capricorn? Um, this eclipse is happening inside of Capricorn because I'm a professional astrologer. I do this for a living and I built my life on astrology and, and, the study of astrology and it's not just this one aspect that I'm looking at that would be naive um, and very like basic study of me to just focus on the Capricorn Eclipse all by itself it's the entire chart that we have to look at so back to the part of fortune and the vertex point in Virgo you have to pay attention to detail what it is that you are what is it that you're consuming Virgo actually rules the stomach and digestion but within your within the zodiac chart and within the astrological chart it says, what are you consuming? What are you absorbing? How are you using that energy? What are you ingesting into your body? And what is it that you do with that in your day-to-day -day life, in your relationships, in your ability to, you know, make a change in this life, to make a change in your world? If you are consuming and in a space that is toxic and draining to you, you will never be able to truly thrive because you are not ingesting and taking in the things that allow you to thrive. You will always be in a space of less. You'll always be in a space of lack. You always be needing more. And the universe, again, does not want, it will sense imbalance. It will sense disharmony. And it will do everything in its power to remove you. So instead of fighting it, instead of questioning it, be open to it. Be open to the wisdom that the universe is trying to, to give to you and how it's trying to reroute you. So what you need to do, because again, it's about this action, Right, so at the time of the eclipse, 
there are going to be a series of events that are going to happen in a lot of you guys' life. Sometimes it's going to be external things that trigger you or make you be like, wait a minute, I don't know if I want this anymore. This could be a fight. Emphasis on the word fight. It could be a misunderstanding. Why? Because Mercury is retrograde and Mars is falling in the sign of Aries. So these are things that there could be a miscommunication that has happened. Um, that creates this need to fight, this need to, to fight it out, to battle it, um, to attack, to, and some of you guys, I'm hearing the word, I want to advance, I want to advance, I want to do better. Maybe it's not so much that you guys will be fighting as much as it is that you want to advance in your, in your level, in your life. You want to advance in your careers. You want to hit the next level when it comes to your health, your wellness, or your relationships, or whatever the case is. So that's the other thing, too, that I um, needed to say at the very beginning of this video is that when we're working with, when I am working with these charts, I can get very much into the details of it. For those of you guys that don't know, I'm a Virgo. I'm all about precision and detailing. It's written all over my chart, um, my personal chart, and also how I do my work. But when it comes to you and your specific detail and your specific timing, I'm not looking at your exact astrology chart. So for the most part, these readings are detailed and specific, but you have to know where this, what Capricorn rules within your chart. You have to know your um, astrological chart in order to see, or for me to see, exactly where this is going to manifest. So take it and listen you listen to your intuition, or if you know astrology, then pull your chart and apply this message to where it belongs. Anyway, so back to what it was that I was saying, you guys really need to open up to receiving this download, okay? And this, is com this comes through your action. This comes through um, your meditation. It comes through what it is that you allow yourself to receive. Emphasis on what you allow yourself to receive. If you are stuck in your ways and saying that this is my routine, this is how I do it, this is the way that I do it, or I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to slow down, when all of these planets are telling you to retrace your steps and, and to stop trying to you know, power forward, if you are going to power forward, let it be in a way of, um, you know, the, the, the divine guiding you. Stop trying to force your will and force your way. Um, so instead of doing it in that way and being open to receiving, you will gain so much clarity. How do you do that? Well, you could do that by going for a walk, factoring in walks, physical activity, maybe boxing, going for a bike ride, going for a jog, a run, those things, going for a swim, that physical energy will allow you to get revelations and truths. In the spiritual community, we always look at meditation as sitting with our legs crossed, um, you know, disconnecting from the rest of the world in a space of stillness. But sometimes stillness comes from a body in motion. So, and that's something that it is that I'm seeing here. Sometimes if you find yourself, for some of you guys, if you find yourself in the middle of a fight, in the middle of a disagreement with someone, you know, that sense of clarity, even though there's action, even though there's chaos around you, it's stillness within. You get a deeper understanding of, listen, I don't need to be in this relationship anymore, or I don't need to be the toxic person, or use these toxic words, or be a part of this, or you know, be the initiator of this anymore, okay? It's about self-reflection, it's about being honest, it's about assessing, and through that, quiet, open to receive, open to understand, you that is stillness and that is an act of meditation in its own right. And it will give you so much clarity as far as what you need to do and what the questions you need to ask yourself is like, why are we doing this? Why am I like this? What do I want for myself? I want more, okay? So at the time of the eclipse, there's gonna be a series of events that could trigger you. It could be internal things that it is that you hear. It could be external things that it is that you see or that you experience. But either way, be open to dissecting it. Be open to questioning it. Be open to asking yourself, when I consume this, when energetically, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, when I allow it into my energy field, does it make me stronger? Does it make me better? And if not, the eclipse, when it starts to take it out, starting at the time of the 4th or the 5th of July, when it starts to take it out, when it starts to remove it, allow it to go, okay? Allow it to go. Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn are all retrograde, okay? Emphasis on the fact that Saturn is retrograde. Saturn rules Capricorn. Saturn is in the final degrees of Capricorn, right? So these are things, these are things that have been 
embedded in you, your relationship, your circumstances for a long time. It's very frustrating. Saturn's energy is very, very frustrating. It feels very isolating. It feels very like demeaning. I don't know why that came through. It feels almost disrespectful. But instead of taking this stuff personally and being like, you know, this is, I've been dealing with this for so long. This is the way it'll be forever. That is simply not the case. This is just the energy of Capricorn. It's very long, okay? It takes its time and it keeps presenting this information to you um, and showing you what it is that you're attracted to, showing you what it is that you've been engaging in so that you get so irritated by it, you get so broken down by it, that the lesson that you learn is so great, it's so embedded in you, it's so permanent, that you will never make the same mistakes again in your life, that you will be like question what it is that you're attracted to, question what it is that you've been asking for, question what it is that you've been engaging with, who you've been engaging with, how you've been doing your work, what your purpose is, that you will actually be so uncomfortable that you will move and when you move, the eclipse is going to take you miles away from the spot that is that you were walking down, this path that you were on, miles away onto the path and the road that it is that you actually belong on. So what you can do with this, what you can, how you can work with this energy during the eclipse is set intention for the future. Set intention for, for you to deeper, have a deeper connection with the divine, with the universe, with your intuition, with your feelings. That is a key. Even though Capricorn is about grounding itself, you want to make sure that you're grounding yourself in this higher truth, this divine connection with the, with the relationship with the divine, because with that, you can have anything. Okay, it's this level of understanding, this level of peace, this level of love, unconditional love and compassion that no one can take from you. That even if the outside world is chaotic, even if the world as you know it is breaking underneath your feet, you know you're good. So first and foremost, set intention for that deeper connection with the divine, with communication with the divine. Then set intention for the things in your life that will feed you, that will give you health, that will give you vitality. Um, set intention for the details and the specifics of your day-to-day -day life that nurture you, that support you, and help you to be in a space that is that you belong. Set intention for stabilizing forces within your relationship. And if it is stable, let it be healthy and, you know, contributing to you and giving you life. Um, set intention that the things that is that you're attracted to, because Venus here in Gemini, are things that are healthy for you, that are engaging for you, that, you know, support you and that you support them. Okay, vice versa. Set intention for um, purpose and business that is, like the work that is that you do, gives some type of you know, value, not only to you, but to others. Set intention that your day-to-day -day life is supportive of the work that is that you do and your, the energy that is that you need in order to do it. These are things that you need to set intention for. Set intention for relationships that, you know, are strong, that are loyal, that are committed to you, but that you're not committed to something and someone's not committed to you if it is toxic or draining. It has to come. It has to be healthy, okay? All right, so let me just go ahead and shuffle really quickly. Those are just some tips, but every single one of you guys are different. Some of you guys are having a lot of like psychological. Some of you guys are having a lot of psychological breakthroughs right now, and those breakthroughs look like breakdowns, okay? It can be really, really tough. It can be really tough to deal with. Let me just get some cards going for us. I'm working with the Rider weight. That one wanted to jump out. Okay, I feel like there's an additional message here with this six of wands okay some of you guys have really trying have been really working to try to escape you've been the three of three of wands is about um looking out into the future and knowing that what you have put out is coming back to you and you're excited for it you're for the most part you're looking forward to it but when it's reversed and sitting next to the seven of swords reverse these are things that you have been avoiding that you are not even allowing yourself to see that you are waiting on a change for in certain aspect of your life that it's like literally you might have to be the one to remove yourself. You might be the one to stop looking for it to come on the horizon. It's not coming. Even if it was to come, 
it would be so toxic when it got there. The universe is trying to protect you and derail you from being on the, the shore waiting for this thing to come in when if it was to come in, it would be so bad for you. The universe won't allow it. Some of you guys need to truly escape and stop burying your head in the sand, okay? With this Capricorn energy, Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, um, and the eclipse happening in the sign of Capricorn, these are things that you have had your head in the sand for too long. You are not open to hearing a different perspective. You are not open to seeing things from a new lens, from a new light. You are just so stuck in your way. And the universe says that if you do stop burying your head in the sand, if you do um, you know, question and ask for more and ask for clarity from the divine or from others and from hearing a different perspective, it will be successful. It will be triumphant. You will see how the battle up until this point has its greatest reward and it will be lasting. It won't be a temporary feeling of satisfaction. Again, this hanged man energy, okay? The hanged man is, is rule, actually ruled by the energy of Pisces, but what it is that I'm seeing is that with Capricorn energy, that energy has been sitting and still for too long. The hangman says, now because of the retrogrades, now because of the eclipse, the eclipse will set things in motion quick, fast, and it will never be the same again. That same thing that has been you've been hung up on will change rapidly overnight. This is Capricorn, has Capricorn written all over it. Ten of Wands reversed, Ten of Wands upright is the burden that is that we carry, the burdens that we accept. The, the responsibilities and the commitments that we say that this is mine to carry, the universe says, no, it's not. If you tap into this higher force, this higher source, this Pisces energy, we have Neptune retrograde in the sign of Pisces. If you tap into the unlimited wisdom and information and education that the universe has to give to you, you will download and re realize that this truth that I've been holding on to, this responsibility, this commitment, this thing that I've accepted for myself, it is not for me to carry. This is not for me to accept, right? And from that, that's where you will get healing. These, do you notice how all of these cards are reversed? Reverse isn't bad, but when I see reversed right now, I'm looking at the retrogrades, okay? This energy is trying to move forward, but in turn, it's turning around and asking you to self-reflect. So when you start realizing that there are certain things that you have been resisting, change that you've been resisting that is now being um, rerouted, that is now being restructured in your life and the world around us, that's where we have healing. But so many of us have been blocking ourselves from seeing the light. So many of us have been blocking ourselves from seeing the truth and the universe will not allow it. It says when you, you, you have the opportunity to use this eclipse, to turn it around and make it work for you to allow it to help you to, I just heard the word advance. That was something that came through earlier. It will help you to advance. It will help you to take a massive leap forward. Again, some of you guys have been walking down this path and that's how you expected it to be. That's the burden that you've been carrying, this 10 of wands type of energy. When the universe says, if you are open to receiving, I will actually pick you up and put you miles away from, but directly on along with your path for you to receive more, and that's the next card, is the Empress energy. You are destined and should be ready to receive more, the harvest, okay? Virgo also rules the harvest. It's what you're able to um, count, what you can see, these tangible evidence of the journey thus far and how it will benefit you. And you decide, is this, do I like this? Do I love this? What else do I want? What else do I need? Ask yourself that question. The next card that I have here is the world card, which is so interesting because as soon as I see this, I feel like it's very apocalyptic. Some of you guys are so scared at the changes that are happening around you because you see it as chaos. You see it as dysfunction. But the thing is, is that the one thing that is constant is change. Things are always moving. That's why I'm said in the very beginning, and the divine wants to remind you that when you plug into the divine, when you plug into the universe, you realize and you have this deeper understanding that gives you peace and clarity that even when things start to change, things start to shift and the world as you know it starts to break down or break apart, you don't even see that as a bad thing. You're just like, I'm good, I'm safe. The universe would not allow me to stay in a space that is that I don't belong that isn't going to nurture me because it just isn't arranged that way. Like, have comfort in that, that the universe is not arranged for there to be disharmony or discord anywhere it, or dysfunction. It wants to make sure that everything is functional. Some of you guys really need to hear that the same thing that is that you're letting go of, the same things, the same cycles that are being completed, there is a new cycle that is being born and it's not something for you to be afraid of. It's everything to inspire you. Again, the Empress energy is here and she has, oh my God, Look, the next card that I pulled up is relationship balance, relationship harmony. 
I don't know if you guys can see this because it's focusing on my face. Okay, let me hide. Okay, relationship balance, relationship harmony. Everything works to balance itself out. Everything, everything in the world is designed to balance itself, to work itself together. Um, the Empress energy, before I move forward, because I will forget, the Empress energy realizes that what it is that she's creating at the very end of that cycle she will birth into this new into this world a new life there is something new that is being born into this new life it is nothing for you to be afraid of but you can't enter into this new stage in your life this new cycle in your life this new path in your life carrying the same burdens the same hesitation the same resistance the same blockages the same obstacles that you were once carrying in this old aspect of your life. You're meant to evolve. Part of fortune, the vertex point in Virgo says to make a list of everything that's working for you and make a list of everything that's not working for you and be open to giving that to the universe. Be open to giving that to the divine to determine what you should take with you and be open to releasing that. There is a relationship balance harmony that is being created here with this card, relationship balance and the harmony from the Nature Speak Oracle. Look at this, you guys. Change is coming. This is the card, the wind. Change is coming, but it's also reversed. You guys have been resisting this. The energy, a lot of people, it's not just you. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad. A lot of people have been resisting this change that needs to happen. Maybe you guys are actually connecting in a relationship, a deeper connection or a deeper building relationship in your work or your health or whatever and you're not taking accountability to how much you actually need to change how much you need to evolve how much you need to learn you, you say to yourself well i've mastered this 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 and this but you haven't mastered this so let go of your ego let go of your perspective look the ocean this is life death and rebirth Literally, you guys, that's exactly what it was that I was saying with the world card, that as this cycle ends, it's already being reborn new into something else. Do not fear the death. You guys have been fighting this change. You guys have been fighting this change. You guys have been resisting it. When everything, look at that. I'm done. I'm done. Like, I, everything, like, okay. Literally, hot springs, return to the sacred, re return back to the divine. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can focus the camera. Um, return back to the sacred, right? This is when the, it gets really hot. You start sweating it out. It's almost like a detox. You really start sweating it out. And, you know, in that space, it's you have to surrender yourself, which was the hanged man. This is part of surrender, which you've been resisting. You have to surrender and let go to receiving and experiencing more for yourself. Information, downloads, a higher love, more prosperity in your business. Um, some of you guys are so set in your way that this is the only way that I can ach achieve. This is the only way that I can succeed. And really, you've been burying your head in the sand and avoiding the truth that there might be a new way for you to learn, for you to grow, for you to evolve, for you to receive more. Right? The next thing is control and discern. That has Virgo written all over it. Virgo has a really hard time letting go of control. I know this because I'm a Virgo. Even with Capricorn, you guys are probably like, I thought we were talking about the Capricorn um, lunar eclipse. Yes, but that's the thing is that, again, it's the entire chart, but that's how set in stone this stuff is. That's how embedded into your bones it is. Capricorn rules bone and teeth. Well, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn rules bone and teeth. But this is a metaphor that says like, this is how, in set, how set in stone it is. The same bones that you were born into this life with are the same bones that you will die. And they have to somehow evolve and shift and grow and the growing pains that come with that. And Virgo has this need in the part of fortune and vertex. That's why I'm bringing up the Virgo energy. Virgo and I'm sorry, the vertex and the part of fortune are showing that you know, you have to let go of this, this control. That's the one thing that Virgo really has a hard time with doing is letting go of control. Control and discern. Virgo actually rules the energy of discernment. Why is this coming through so strongly right now? I believe because this is a gift. This is a gift that the universe is giving us at the time of the eclipse that yes, you cannot control what's going on in your world. You cannot control what's happening. In fact, you have to surrender to it. But as you do that, be discerning. Be discerning and question what is coming through. Be discerning where you're spreading your seeds. Because that was the next card that came through and this is also reversed. Spread seeds. 
be can be um discerning about where it is that you're spreading your seed where it is that you are trying to root yourself in where it is that you want to belong and be open to where the universe sees that you belong where you're going to make a bigger per make a bigger dent make a bigger impact have better relationships have better business better growing better branding all of those things better health all of those things are yours to receive but you have to be open to receiving them allowing the universe at the time of the eclipse to pick you up and drop you off miles away from in a, to a new space, a new territory where you're gonna do way better than you have ever before, okay? So I know that's a lot, but you guys know I like to give it to you good and I like to give all of it to you here on my YouTube channel. This is authentic astrolo astrology and in intuitive studies and, and, and information always and forever, okay? We're all about precision here on my youtube channel and empowerment so make sure that you are subscribed to my youtube channel go ahead and share this video with your friends via text message or in your ig stories or on facebook or whatever so that we can share this information with others there is this higher um shift in collective consciousness that we're all kind of you know experiencing right now so it's really important that you're plugging into people who are in tune who are authentic and have positive intention for you and good intention for you and i'm definitely one of those that's not a read for the filth towards anyone else i'm just letting you go guys know my intention if you have any questions about this um uh, if you have any questions about this eclipse or if you want to reserve a bottle with me for the time of the eclipse i have lunar intentional oils take your time with setting your intention okay every word that you put put down in your intention is something that i will work with for you you can find the the links to the oils and how to use the oils down in my description box but for those of you guys that do reserve them they are custom and I I pay attention to words I pension pay attention to detail if I find that there's a blockage or I find that there's resistance or an obstacle to whatever it is that you're trying to set intention for whatever it is that you're trying to create I will work to actively remove that for you and then when it's done I will send it off um, this can take some time and please keep in mind that there's I have a lot of clients right now and with the fixed candles and that type of stuff that it does take time so i appreciate all of you guys that are patient with me in that and um yeah that's something to factor into before you reserve your order if you're expecting it to be like two day shipping amazon prime that's not something that you're going <laughs> to experience not now at least um because it's just impossible for me to work and plus it takes me more than two to three days in order to create one oil anyways so anyways you guys um i'm sending you guys all of my love i hope that this video helps you if you have any questions again you can comment them down below or send an email to me at info at bahati life and the links for the oils and anything else that is that you may need will be found below in the description box until then make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and i'll see you in my next one Bye.